In this video, I'm going to tell you about our summer trip, how we planned it, how we covered 22 destinations in 20 days. Our experiences from each destination, how much did we spend on it, including meals, fuel, living costs etc. We are based in Gothenburg Sweden from where we started our road trip. Just a disclaimer before we get into it, this video is not sponsored by anyone, everything that you will hear, will be my own opinion, based on the experiences I had. First, I am going to tell you about how I planned the whole trip. It was the month of March last year, when we started planning our trip. My wife told me that she wants to see France, Switzerland, and Italy, but I wanted to see castles in Germany. I listed down all the destinations, then I started adding them on Google Maps. It looked like this. In that plan I skipped Italy. We then booked the hotel and Disneyland passes. Then we started looking into entry requirements. We used reopen.europa.eu to check all entry requirements. You can simply add your whole travel plan there and you will get the requirements based on your plan. It was stupid of us to book first and check the entry requirements after. Turned out that we cannot enter France because we were not vaccinated yet. We had to cancel everything and our money got refunded in few days. Then, we added Italy as well into our plans. We knew our start day and our return day, so we booked return trip via ferry from Sweden to Germany and back. Now remember, we wanted to do this trip as cheap as possible and reasonably enjoy as well. Me being the nerd and the planner in family, I made this following Excel sheet. I listed down all the places to cover. When we will get there, that's the start date. When we will leave, which is the exit date. Distance between destinations from one another. Number of nights we are going to stay there. Which country. Activities cost, if any. Parking cost, that's estimated cost. And the accommodation cost, which is this column. And by the way, all the costs here are in Swedish Kronor. I then added a budget of food cost per day, which to my estimation was 500 per day. And down there it's the total cost of food for the whole trip. Now for a lot of you, this is a very low price for the whole day. Especially for 3 people, and don't get me wrong, we ate out a lot, except for Switzerland, we ate out almost every day. In Switzerland we cooked our meal. Because we knew that, if we would eat out, the whole trip will go over our initial budget. Then we booked cancelable accommodations, based on entry and exit dates, on locations where we had night stays. Ok so, this column represents the distance in kilometers, I simply added all the numbers you are seeing in this column. The number of fuel tanks my car will utilize. Now this can be different for you depending on what kind of car you are driving. I used 2021 Volvo V60R design, it's a D3 which means diesel with 150 horsepower. So a normal family car. It usually does between 4.7 and 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Which in my opinion is amazing. I know Prius could do better but in my opinion it's not as good looking as this. Moving on, this column is for the total budget for the strip, which we decided to be 35,000 Swedish Kronor, which is approximately $3,800, or approximately 3,400 euros. Then I simply added up the activity costs, parking costs, and total living cost. I guess, that is enough with the calculations. Let us get into the road trip. We started off our trip on 12th of July and drove to Malmo, which is the third, largest city in Sweden and is approximately, three hour away from Gothenburg. We drove to the ferry without taking any breaks. After that we simply rested, ate food and made ourselves ready for the adventures ahead. We took Finlines from Malmo to Lübeck which is a city in Germany. It was 8 hours in the Baltic Sea, cruising towards our destination in Germany. We then got off and drove straight to my brother's place in Berlin. Where we stayed 2 nights, mainly because I had not seen him from a long time and we didn't want to explore Berlin because we had already done that many many times. After 2 days of stay we departed for our adventure, we drove approximately 6 hours on the first day took couple of stops to eat and stretch and finally reached our first destination which was Neuschwanstein castle. I had been planning to see this castle for a very very long time, and today was the day I got to see it. Let me tell you, it was simply majestic. 
I loved it even more when I saw it in real in front of me. Now what I didn't know about this castle was, that there is another castle maybe not as majestic as Neuschwanstein, but, still amazing, it is right next to it. That became a bonus for us. It's called Hohenschwanga Castle. We stayed at Hotel Muller Schwanga for one night. Which was amazing, to be honest, I had never seen these amazing English-speaking humble Germans before. It was just incredible. I recommend you guys to stay there, if you are planning to go there to see these castles. Again, this video is not sponsored, this is just my suggestion for you guys. We actually regret that we didn't stay there for longer because the location was amazing, you had Alpsee Lake, these two castles, excellent food, trails, beautiful nature around you, but then again, we didn't know all this was right next to Neuschwanstein Castle. With that said, I will definitely go there again for more days. I give this destination a 10 out of 10. Full video covering this destination is linked up, on the right side. We stayed within our budget of 2297 Swedish krona. Which means approximately $250. Or 220 euros. Okay moving on, after a night stay there, we drove directly to Lago di Braze, it's a beautiful lake between mountains in Italy, this was approximately 250 kilometers away from Neuschwanstein Castle. The entrance to the lake wasn't any special but as soon as we walked towards it. It was just breathtaking, so beautiful, surrounded by mountains and amazing nature, it's definitely one of the best places in Italy. We did not plan to stay the night there, but because of its beauty, we stayed there for 3 good hours and walked around, ate food and enjoyed the views. I give this destination a 10 out of 10, as well. Again, full video covering this destination is linked up, on the right side. We only spent on parking here. That was approximately 100 Swedish kronor, which is equal to, 8 dollars or, 6 euros. After that we started driving towards Venice, I had seen this city before but, I realized that the city has a romantic vibe to it. That is why, I plan to visit it again with my wife. I had researched a lot about the parking lots in Venice, which ones are safe and which are not, I can recommend you guys to use the Tronchetto parking lot, it's monitored and expensive, I believe it's a safe place for your car, but if you are driving a 10 year old Fiat Punto, you can park it anywhere you want, there are free parking options as well, but it's very unsafe. I love my Volvo, and I try to take care of it, so, I chose to pay extra to keep it safe. I would not recommend you guys to go to Venice, with your children especially when they are under 5 years old. Reason is that, the city is connected with small bridges and most of them don't have any ramps if you are bringing a stroller with you. It's basically a walking city, you can walk around or take a boat from one place to another, but that's expensive. We walked around and our child got tired very quickly so I had to carry him on my shoulders, which was okay because I love him, but I did not enjoy it as much I did, when I came here alone. It's sad but that's the reality. Otherwise the city is great, food is great, we experienced rudeness from some restaurant staff. Which was not that good. Anyway, we stayed there for two days in a three-star hotel which was basically in the center and walked around and experienced Venice. It was amazing. I would give it 6 out of 10 mainly because of rudeness from some Italians, expensive parking, and no ramps in the city. We overspent on food here. All tourist destinations are extra expensive in Italy. We departed from Venice after two days and drove to Rome where we were staying for three nights. Rome is one of the best, if not the best places in Italy, mainly because of its Roman history, kind people, food, amazing Roman architecture, by just walking around in the city, seeing the architecture, getting the city vibe, it became one of my favorite places in Europe. We stayed in an four-star hotel which was close to the city center. We ate out every day and stayed within our daily budget here. We saw, Vatican City.
we saw the Colosseum, and remains of Roman architecture. We could not fly our drones there, mainly because we were not allowed to. So, there is no aerial footage of Rome in this video. Anyway, I would give 9 out of 10 to Rome, because, the ticketing process and getting to see different landmarks is not very straightforward. I will create a short video of Rome, and will upload it soon. After staying 3 nights in Rome, we departed towards Naples, which was approximately 236 kilometers away from where we stayed in Rome. We took a stop in the middle to eat and to stretch. We reached Naples in the evening, the same day. Our accommodation was right in the center, literally 5 minutes walking distance from the central station. We were staying there for 2 nights. The parking was out on the street, but I used paid parking on the central station again, because, I was warned by the host that, people can break or scratch your car, if you park it outside. This is a very common problem in southern part of Italy. Anyway, we stayed in Naples for two nights. The accommodation had a tiny kitchen so, we could cook our food and didn't eat out in Naples. On the first day, the plan was to visit Amalfi Coast. It was approximately 60 kilometers away from our accommodation in Naples. We went there according to our plan, but what we did not know, was the road condition and how dangerous the route was. We literally saw small rocks dropping from the mountain on the road in front of us, the road was in terrible condition as well. There were no corner mirrors on the dangerous turns. My wife asked me turn around and go back several times, but I knew, I can handle it, we finally reached there. The coast itself is beautiful and we enjoyed a lot there. Parking was easy. Again, I used paid parking there. The views were stunning as we expected. After spending good 6 to 7 hours there, we went back from the same route. I would give Amalfi 6 out of 10, mainly because of the road conditions, which was dangerous as hell. On the next day, our plan was to visit the famous coastal town, Positano. It was approximately 60 kilometers as well from our accommodation in Naples. We expected same road conditions and same problems. But, surprisingly, the road condition was great. Anyway, we reached Positano without any issues. Before going there, I had researched about the parking garages there, there was only one parking garage, that had good reviews. So I aimed for that. But, I could not find it. You guys must know, the major problem these parking lots have, is that, you will have to leave your car keys. They will park your car by themselves. There are so many comments on Google, that these people have scratched cars, some people even wrote that, their things were stolen from the car. I did not want to hand over car keys to them, and I didn't want them to park my car. So, I had to drive twice around the town to find an empty parking space, which I did find on the road. I parked my car out in the open and it was paid parking spot. In Italy, you are allowed to park your car on blue marked area on the road. Yellow marking is for public vehicles, like buses. Or, special vehicles like, police, ambulance etc. I paid. 22 euros for 6 hours, which was fine in my opinion. We then, roamed around, ate food, went to the beach, which was again an epic experience. I love beaches and nature. To get to the beach, we had to take steps. There were definitely more than 1000 steps. This is my guess as I did not count. My 3 year old son got tired midway, so I had to carry him again on my shoulders both ways. But this was the only hard part. I really enjoyed Positano, the vibe was amazing, 
Town was amazing, roads were good, beach was amazing, the whole experience I would say, was unique. I would give Positano a 10 out of 10. I recommend you guys to visit this small coastal town, it is amazing. But please book a car to get there, otherwise it will become difficult and might even ruin your experience. This is the end of part 1. Stay tuned for part 2 of this video, where I will talk about our journey back via Switzerland and Germany. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, as this allows me to keep creating content for you. Turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss out on anything.